Welcome back to Comic Book News. Today, we're going to talk about what else? Powers of X, number six. The final issue in the House of X, Powers of X slash Powers of Ten, uh, mega event leading into the all-new Dawn of X. But is it Dawn of X, or is it Krakoan X? Well, we've got a little special treat for you today. If you hold up your phone and look at this little uh, code here, you can download a an actual true type font of the Krakoan alphabet. This is fun to play around with, and we're using it for uh, lots of fun stuff here on the channel, including, oh, Krakoan lower thirds. This is just one of the exciting new uh, elements we're adding to the show. So, hey, let's not waste any more time. Let's get started today on Comic Book News. Welcome to the show. Yeah, I'm I'm Dan Shaheen. That's right. We're we're kicking it in Krakoan, and we're talking about what else? We're talking about Powers of X number six. This is where it all ends uh, for the Powers of X House of X saga. That's rebooting a uh, a whole new era of the X Men. Let me tell you, this is burning up the sales charts. It's by far the most popular stuff on this here YouTube channel that you're watching right now, uh, and so. Thank you for that. And you know what? Let's not waste any time. Let's go straight into the all new, brand new, million dollar comics. Game. Wow, that's right. We've got an all new uh, setup and upgrades for the million dollar comic cam. I think you'll see a little less glare, a little more visibility on the pages. And let's dive straight in to Powers of X. Number six, The House of X. Right, this is gonna fill in several key questions are answered in this uh, issue. And of course, a few more questions are opened up. So um, we start at the beginning of X-Men in the year one, and this is uh, in the current timeline, Moira Taggart's ninth life. Okay, and we get to see her again, introducing herself to uh, Charles Xavier for the first time and uh, dropping some pretty uh, cryptic clues here about things that might be might be coming down the line in the form of these sort of tarot card-like images. Um, but also granting access to Charles Xavier. We've seen this before, right? Um, but we're gonna learn some new stuff about what happened in this issue. Okay, next we jump into X3, X-Men in the year 1000, right? So this whole time we've been wondering what timeline are we looking at? in uh, the X3 part, right? It, this is the part that examines a thousand years in the future, the far future. It appears like the mutants have been dominated by this, by the human robot combo. They got together and uh, uh, put pushed down the mutants and now the phalanx has come and humanity is gonna ascend uh, into, into godhood, essentially. Okay, so we go to the year 1000 and, and we'll quickly see that uh, the, the librarian who's been sort of like our 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 narrator through this uh, X3 section or sort of the main protagonist almost um, see they've got a sanctuary of mutants and who's in the sanctuary but spoiler alert good old Logan and um, and someone else a key player is revealed and we get to see pretty soon um, and it's revealed through the dialogue. If you can't tell who this is, this is Moira McTaggart. So this is Moira living to a thousand years in the future. Wow, what does this mean? Um, so they the 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 librarian is basically revealing that you know humanity tomorrow, humanity is going to ascend, right? The phalanx is going to come. They've judged us worthy. We're going to get joined into the phalanx, and then the phalanx is going to go to the nearest black hole and are gonna merge with an, a, other mega artificial intelligences, right? Um, that we explored in the previous issue, right? We looked at all the different uh, levels of artificial intelligences. So the idea here is humanity is gonna join the phalanx, they will join that. Once they join that, they will transcend all space and time, okay? Um, and another thing that the librarian reveals to these mutants is uh, that you know, in, in as it begins, he's speaking presumably whatever their language is, but he quick, quickly switches into English, which is a surprise to Wolverine. 
and Moira. And, uh, you know, he reveals, look, I've been watching you. It's, it's not just about like preserving your species. I've been getting information from you. And he has figured out uh, what's going on with Moira. And we learn a really critical point about her powers that we've talked about here, um, which is that if she dies, does the universe she died in continue on or is it like snuffed out and everything is restarted again? We learn in this issue from the librarian that um, it seems like those universes are snuffed out. So it's not like those previous timelines of uh, of lives are, are still continuing on somewhere after Moira disappears from them or dies in them. They are gone. Everything is rebooted. And he reveals that, look, we're going to keep you alive until humanity ascends to godhood and if we ascend to godhood then we then transcend all space and time so even if you die and are rebooted or whatever it won't matter right we, we will be so we'll be so far beyond that it won't matter and we will just be able to put a stop to you right he's basically he's like you know there's no way if we reach that level i doubt that we're gonna allow something like you to exist frankly and they're like you know why why are you even telling us this um, which is a really great question, right? Because he's like, look, I'm, you, there's no way you can kill me. I'm st before you can even start to try to hurt me, I will have formulated a plan to defeat you. That's how, how smart these post-humans are, right? These are the post-humans, these blue guys. This is what humanity ultimately became by creating artificial intelligent machines and then working with them and genetically engineering humanity into sort of the next level of humanity. Whereas mutants are the next natural evolutionary level after humanity, humanity decided to short circuit nature altogether and use technology and use their brains uh, to become these post humans. And frankly, he reveals to Moira and this is that what you never realized is that really it's us it's the post humans it's 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 humans are the true are enemies of mutants right because um you know you thought it was the machines that would defeat you but we just use them to buy time right and then the sentinels bought us years nimrod bought us decades and this is where moira is realizing it i never saw it and i guess you never will right you were just too busy. You couldn't see the true enemy the whole time. It's not about cooperating with humanity. Humanity is the enemy. And, uh, you know, why are you telling me this? I'll, you can give me a chance. I'm giving you a chance to convince me because I've been thinking about it. And if we ascend to godhood and whatever, I'm not going to have a material form anymore. I'm not going to be a, be a human anymore or post-human. We're just going to be this sort of ethereal mental construct. And you know what? I, I don't know if that's worth living. Is that just an artificial state? Is that real? It's kind of an existential question. Really interesting. I mean, he's a post-human, but he's still a human. And he's like, I'll never be able to like eat a sandwich again. He doesn't say that, but you know what I'm saying. I'll never be able to sniff a flower or, you know, whatever. I'll never be able to do those things that make life worth living um, as a human. So basically he's he's kind of waxing like i don't know i guess i really got no choice i guess i'll just become a god and suddenly wolverine's like how's that for fast he's like how's that for faster than the speed of thought i don't really think that he was i really think that the post-human has decided to, to, to he's hipping them to all this right he's telling them this so that they will kill moira and prevent this from happening and more and so what do we learn? And then the key reveal here, really spoiler alert, this is really important. So ends the sixth life of Moira X. So when we've looked at our timeline before, uh, the sixth life has always been blanked out. We have no idea what happened. Now we realize that this was the life that Moira lived all the way through to see the ascension, uh, to see up to this ascension event and finally realizing that there is really no way to cooperate with humanity right and then in her next life next several lives seven eight uh she is she's tried different ways of fighting against that whether that was joining with apocalypse like we saw in the eighth life uh or trying to like snuff out all of uh uh, uh the creators of the sentinels all that stuff uh 
realizing didn't work. And so when it came to her ninth life in the current life, she decided it's going to go a different way. And you're going to hook up with Charles Xavier and recruit Magneto. And they're going to form their own stronghold. They're going to form their own mutant nation. And in essence, they're going to cooperate. But really, the secret agenda here is driven by Moira, knowing that the death of mutantdom seems inevitable with the rise of humanity. So in reality, is humanity now the, the secret true enemy of mutantdom and the X-Men? Maybe. We get some of our nice little text pieces here that we're going to come back to. This was n n not super informative, uh, but we'll come back to it. Um, so we learn more. We learn that um, uh, Moira is, is like, look, Charlie, you've always been the same. Every life that I've known you, you are just like the most hopeful person. You're like, we, humanity is good at its heart and we can work together. And she has decided basically she's going to have to break him. She's going to have to break Charles of that notion that humanity is here to help and uh, that that mutants need to just separate and and really protect themselves right from this inevitable completely inevitable rise of post-humanity um so maybe that's what they need to stop post-humanity anyway we go into moira's journal this is another three page long text her, and we get lots of juicy stuff in here we're going to come right back to um but let's finish it up we come back to present day Timeline 9, the beginning of this whole um, Hasa X mut mutantum deal. And here, where is Mo Moira, who's been conspicuously absent through all the series? She's been hiding in her hidden cache. And this is where she, uh, in they, they reveal in some of the text pieces what's been going on with Moira. Because if you were a fan of X-Men over the past umpteen years... You realize that in a more recent storyline, Moira was like killed on Shire. I, I haven't read that issue yet, but I did some research, right? So Moira has been dead in continuity up until <clears throat> House of X number one debuted. Now we're seeing that she's behind the scenes. And not only is she behind the scenes of this whole uh, House of X movement, if you will, she's been behind the scenes of the X-Men sort of twiddling, fiddling events for a long, long time. And... I don't know if this is symbolic or what, but you know, Magneto comes in serving and bringing tea like as a gesture of peace, but we're seeing Magneto and Charles essentially like serving tea to Magneto, or, or, or sorry, to Moira. And I feel like it's sort of symbolic of like where the true power lies, right? And, uh, but they reveal that Okay, they've created the Mutant Council. It's completely filled with the exception of one seat, right? The Hellfire Club's branch. So there's the, the the four seasons or four branches. There's the seasoned older leaders. There's Xavier, Magneto, and Apocalypse, right? Then there's the sort of summer branch, the, 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 the younger mutants. And that's uh, Cyclops, uh, Storm, and Nightcrawler. Sort of three like senior X-Men. Uh, then we have the Hellfire Club branch, which right now is going to be Sebastian Shaw and the White Queen. And they have a third seat, a Red King seat meant to be filled uh, that has not been filled yet. And we've seen some stuff that spoils it that maybe that's going to be Kitty Pride, maybe in a sort of like twist. That'd be interesting. And then the final group, which is sort of like the problem group, right? And that consists of who is it? Exodus. Mr. Sinister, uh, and uh, and that third problem guy, right? So, um, we go back and we, we come back into the final events of House of X, number six that we saw, where it ends on, you know, just look at what we've made. But then we get to see sort of the, the coda to that in like, yeah, we've made it, but is it enough? And, you know finally we get to see a quote i am not ashamed of what i am from magneto this was the title of a previous issue and let but let them try to stop us this time and yes let them try right and this is i am not ashamed of what i am this is the end so uh we go what's next this is the dawn of x right these are all the new books coming out 
And as we can see, well, let's let's look at them in the native Krakoan, which now if you've been reading this long enough, I, it's starting to stick to the point where I can actually kind of read it. We know this says next, right? So we know that's the X, and we know that says N, and that's an E, X, T, right? So down here, what do we got but X men, right? That's the M and that's the N. They're similar X men. Ah, good fun. Uh, then Excalibur. Next. Uh, next. Uh, oh, sorry, no, that was not Excalibur. This is the Marauders. Then Excalibur. You can almost start to read it. Some of them even even more than others. Uh, here's the X Force, right? That kind of looks like X Force. So uh, good fun. And then of course. That looks like New Mutants. And then this one is uh, Fallen Angels, right? So this is what's coming next uh, in, the, in the Dawn of X. And you know what? I'm going to at least read the number one of all of those. I'm not super jazzed about um, the non-Hickman written stuff, but what are you going to do? So let's go back and, and, and go through those uh, text pieces really quick. Um, we talked about, uh, I'm just going to whip this out, right? Moira's journal. This is where it really all goes down. This is really the important stuff. Um, so much is revealed here. Uh, basically, she's revealing, and we're seeing this is throughout time, different journal entries over time. And we're able to kind of read between the lines and see where this takes place sort of in different parts of um, X-Men continuity, right? So in the beginning, this is early on in the relationship. She took months, um, but she reveals that, you know, when she opened her mind to Xavier, he kind of got a glimpse, but he he does not have total recall over all the events of all those lives like she does, right? So if she wants, if he really wants to understand questions, she has to interpret them. So she is really kind of manipulating his control. And she's like, sure, he could go in and look again. But one, I, I don't want him to. And two, um, even if he does, he'll, he, he won't, he'll dig into one specific event. He's not going to look at everything. So he'll never really know the true plan. And as if to know, uh, you know, point out even more that uh, she's got circuit uh, uh, secrets, right? We've got the uh, uh, redacted parts. Oh, let's shrink down a little bit. Give us a little more room. Perfect. Um, so we've got the redacted portions. But next, I, I have a choice to make. I've been lying to myself about what I'm capable of, right? Um, basically, she's revealing like she's becoming romantically involved with, with Charles Xavier um, to try and break him, to try and get him to like forget about humanity, and it's working. Um, next is revealed is really interesting. Um, they had a breakthrough with Charles Xavier, right? Xavier says, like, I've got this idea. If we get the right combination of five mutants together, we can do something cool, which we learned in previous issues is to reincarnate mutants, including their minds. Um, but what's missing is a mutant that can tweak reality. They don't have one of those, right? But that I've used my... Uh, expertise in genetic modification to find potential matches for both Charles and me to produce such a mutant and there are several possibilities. Now we know they used Proteus and we know that they got together to create Proteus. So did they intentionally create Proteus for, for the purposes of, of this master plan? It'd be interesting to go back to those old Proteus issues and, and see how that could or possibly fit in. Okay, next Magneto. They've recruited Magneto, and I'm assuming this is the time when Magneto became the leader of the X-Men in our current continuity. Um, and she talks about what well, he's kind of an asshole. He's like, you know, the, the, the other side of the coin of Xavier in many ways, um, including like personality-wise. Next is Apocalypse. Basically, like... Um, you know, he's he's... He, He's been brought in, um, so in his raw primal state and sees the whole world as unfit, so much so that he will test everything to find something to build on. What must be done now is the avoidance 
of an apocalypse event and the prevention of certain Omega level mutants falling under his sway. Now we do know that his original four horsemen um, are trapped somewhere in Krakoa or one of the Krakoan islands. So I'm sure there's a lot more to come. Again, another redaction. Um, okay. I have underestimated what Xavier's fascination with the possibilities of what can and cannot be accomplished with mutant genetic material. Basically, she's revealing here that when Xavier and Magneto went to Bar Sinister and recruited um, Mr. Sinister, they did that without her knowledge or asking or anything. They just sort of did it. And she's like, geez, these men. Um, next, regarding Magneto, we have lost Magneto, I'm assuming. This is later when Magneto turns from the cause and goes back to being an evil mutant, right? And then finally, regarding Xavier, I, she says, I have, re Moira says, I have decided to remove myself from the world. I've become too active a force in this and have put both myself and our great plan at risk. We will fake my death using a replica and I will return to the shadows where I belong. This is basically revealing that when she did die in that previous story that I talked about, uh, they took a previous version of her consciousness, took her, made the clone or husk of her, but stripped it presumably of her reincarnation power, put an older version of the memories, killed that. That's why Moira has been out of sight and in the shadows where she belongs, as she says. This is pretty interesting stuff. Um, Moira is quite the shadowy influence. We still have not revealed what, if anything, is going on under Xavier's helmet. I refuse to believe that they're not showing his face for this entire series since he's had the helmet on, since Krakoa uh, is meaningless. I refuse. It means something, right? Um, so we're going to figure out what that is, hopefully at some point. Um, theory time. So, uh, what are the theories here? Uh, one of them that they showed in the previous issue that helmet sort of sitting on a stump in Krakoa. We know Krakoa. What Krakoa does is makes uh, it can make replicas of people. That's back from its old continuity. So, is that what's going on here with um, with uh, the helmet? Who knows? What I do know is uh, we've got a new feature I want to introduce here. You may have noticed our really interesting thumbnail image on this video, perhaps you clicked on. Uh, I'm sick and tired of boring old thumbnails, either with my face or just a cover or just like some text. So I'm going to try finding fun, interesting, pertinent thumbnail images when I can on the internet. And I'm reaching out to people uh, and talking to them and asking for their permission to use them as thumbnails. And, and uh, luckily, uh, Trial by Tentacles agreed. He takes some really great macro photos of uh, like action figures and uh, just they're really great. He's got a lot of great House of X stuff. I recommend going to check it out. I'm going to put a link in the comments, not in the comments, but in the uh, description below this video. So go check that out. Um, thanks for checking that out. Thanks for checking this video out. We're going to be back soon with more stuff, including The Batman's Grave, another awesome comic I've been looking forward to uh, checking out and reviewing. That'll be coming up next. In the meantime, hey, thanks for watching and supporting, and we'll see you next time.